Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. You may be sat there thinking, why is your makeup so much darker than usual? You probably aren't thinking that. I am putting words into your mouth, but I am doing it for a reason. And <laughs> that is because I have just finally filmed another second channel video. Yay, woo! Um, where I spun a wheel to let it pick my makeup, um, which I know is a TikTok trend, but I don't like TikTok, so I'm doing it here. Uh, I've been binge watching Jenna Marbles recently and I miss her to pieces and I have always just aspired to be like her. I've always wanted to create content like her and I've just never really found the confidence to do so or I've never really found the time to do so. And I decided that I'm gonna stop making excuses about it and I'm gonna just make some fun content that I wanna do because I wanna have fun. The content that I make here, I love doing. I love talking about this. I love sitting down and talking with you all, um, but it is a little bit emotionally exhausting. It is a little bit heavy. And sometimes I need a break from that. And I know that sometimes you need a break from that too. So if you ever want a break from all of this and you wanna sit down and do something fun with me, uh, then I am going to try to do just a fun, silly little video once a week over on Kiwi, which is Kiwi with a Q. Um, so if you wanna join me with that, then I would love to have you there. So do go subscribe. That video is maybe up while you're watching this, but maybe not. It'll be up soon if not. Um, and I appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy the new fun content. Um, I had a lot of fun filming it and I just, yeah, I'm looking forward to a new chapter of just having fun sometimes. <laughs> So yeah, obviously it turned out quite well. Um, spoiler alert, I guess. Maybe don't look at my face. I did make one change since filming it though, because there was something that I was absolutely not okay. Um, a terrible decision that the universe made for me. So if you wanna know what that was, then do go check it out. Yeah, anyway, enough self promo. Actually, no, it's not. While you're going and looking at me in other places, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that queer kiwi um and then also people always tell me off for not mentioning it i do have music <laughs> it is available on every streaming platform i do have music videos that are available here on youtube just on a different channel name it is all linked in my description um and i am working on something at the moment and if you want to get insider information you want to see stuff before anyone else you want to see the sort of journey of it then you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash SavvyCat um, because I am excited to start doing stuff again. So yeah. Okay, now the self-promotion is over. Um, today's video, <laughs> in today's video, I wanted to watch some stuff with you, okay? I was perusing on my um, burner account, my YouTube account that I use for planning videos. Um, which is always a nightmare because the entire, you know, recommended page is like the Daily Wire and other hellish material. But it does help me come up with ideas. And today, what that is, is I am going to watch some videos uploaded by the channel called Babylon B. This is a conservative satirical um, account. They upload a lot of satire content. But my God, is it some of the most offensive horrible content I've ever seen. Like it gives me an actual migraine. I despise it. It's awful. And I subjected myself to watching so much of it. And so today I'm going to subject you to watching it too. You are so welcome. I know that you're super stoked and you're so glad that I decided to share this with you. But before we do get into it, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to today's patron of the day, David. I love and appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for all of your support. Um, I hope that you enjoy this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, as I said before, go to patreon.com slash savvycat. I appreciate it a lot. Um, okay, now that I'm done with all of this, let's get into it. Okay. I'm sorry I procrastinated starting this video for so long. I don't really want to watch these videos, but here we go. Let's get into it. So first up, we have Target Dog attempts to get girl to change her gender. These are cute. They're sparkly. Psst. Hey, kid, come here. I know that you're into all this girly crap right now, but did you ever think about changing your gender? My mom says I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. I'm not a stranger. 
I'm your pal, Bullseye the Target Dog. And it can be our little secret. We don't need to tell your mom or dad. So what do you say? Come on over here for a little gender affirming care. Snip, snip. Mom! Ah, jeez, I got a vamoose. So we're off to a really great start. Don't worry, this video does have another two full minutes remaining to say the same thing multiple times. Just to really hammer it home that Target specifically um, really wants your kids to have gender reassignment surgery at the ripe age of like 10 years old. They're like really pro that. You can tell that because they have a pride section. Um, that's it. Yeah, they have a pride section. So obviously they want all kids to change their gender. So- There you are, kid. Your mom ain't around anymore, is she? No, she's looking at throw pillows from the Magnolia Collection by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Good, good, we got plenty of time. I see you're looking at Barbie dolls. Are you heteronormative? I just like girl toys because, you know. Ah, bigot, eh? I see how it is. Here, take some puberty blockers. You'll be playing with G.I. Joes in no time. So as you can gather, um, they really like this point and they think it's really, really funny. <laughs> all the left want to do is change all the kids' genders. Girls aren't allowed to play with Barbies. That's why women were so stoked by the Barbie movie. And we were saying it's great to have a movie made by women for women. It's great to have a Barbie movie that's all pink. We love this movie because we hate Barbie and we hate pink and we hate womanhood. That's why we all really liked this movie and we were all really stoked by it. They just come up with the most ridiculous, ridiculous narrative that no one is saying. <laughs> I love that they just see everything in black and white. Like, it's like we say everyone deserves a choice and they hear, oh, oh, you hate women? Like, no, <laughs> who said that? It's like, Everyone deserves to be who they are and do what makes them happy. And what they hear is like, oh, so you don't think girls can like pink and you think they have to be boys. Oh, so you think that all boys have to play with Barbie dolls then? It's like, no, no, no. Some girls like pink, some don't. Some boys want to play with Barbie. Like all we're saying is like kids do what makes them happy and everyone do what makes them happy. That's literally it. You are projecting because you have very strict ideas of what you think gender are. So when we try to break the norms and say you can do what you want, you view that as us wanting to go very strict in the opposite direction. That's not true. We're not trying to control people. You are. And you are projecting that onto us. No one is, no one is trying to change the way your kids identify. No one is doing that. You're doing that. You're trying to change the way your kids identify because if they're trans, you won't let them exist as such. So you, you're doing the changing here. You're enforcing, you're enforcing that. So you're the problem. Yeah, so that's that video. It is two and a half minutes, but I don't really see the need in watching the last part because it is the same thing. They just do it three more times for no reason. Next up, we have a day in the life of a childless woman who is not at all miserable. Hey guys, I'm C. Handler, and I chose not to have kids because they're gross. Ugh. Why is this video <laughs> a phone <laughs> with a screen? Like, it's like, look, you're watching a TikTok on your phone. Why didn't you just make this a portrait video so that I can watch it on my phone like a TikTok? or even just make it a vertical video. Why did you have to put the phone on the screen here? That's genuinely the most ridiculous thing I've seen. Why did you do that? What is the point in that? Why? I hate it. Don't do that. This is a day in the life of a childless woman. <laughs> I get up at 6 a.m., remember that I have no kids, and go back to sleep because I was out clubbing until 4 a.m. trying to fill the void in my soul with alcohol and meaningless sex. Why do you assume that women who don't have kids have a void in their soul and all go out clubbing until 4 a.m. and have meaningless sex? Like, I'm sorry, let me just, hold on. I have a question here. Um, nuns, right? I feel like you're all pretty pro nuns, right? I feel like that's like right up your alley, never having sex in your life, like dedicating your entire life to God. A lot of these people are kind of along those vibes. And are they gonna say that nuns are missing something from their life? They're not doing any of this shit. They're not going clubbing. They're not, they're not doing any of that. And they're also not saying that there's a void in their life because that is filled by God and their love of God, right? These women just have other things 
that bring them joy and fill their life with happiness, happiness and fulfillment. Like nuns have God. These women have other things because mental health, because mental illness is so funny. <laughs> mental illness is so funny. The only people who don't want kids are mentally ill, obviously. Um First thing I do is take my anti-anxiety medication, then my antidepressants, then my other prescription meds, and then a shot of Jack to take the edge off. Because mental illness is so funny. Mental illness is so funny. The only people who don't want kids are mentally ill, obviously. Um, and like mentally ill people are just always depressed and sad. They don't have kids, they don't want kids, or they're taking all of this medication because they don't have kids. Like, I'm sorry, but a lot of people who have severe mental illness won't have kids because they don't want to pass that on because it's genetic. And I think that that is a valid thing, you know? Being mentally ill is not a fun experience and it can make you like an unfit parent, you know? If you don't think that you are able to regulate your emotions enough to raise a child and you also don't want to pass on the like health issues that you have, then I think that's a valid reason to not want to have kids. And like, it doesn't deserve being made fun of. 11 a.m. is daily brunch, alone, cheers. Why are they so afraid of being alone? Why are they so afraid of doing anything alone? Brunch by yourself is great. I recommend brunch by yourself, actually. You don't have to do it every day, but like brunch by yourself is great. And now I'm at my job. Hashtag girl boss. Having a career is so liberating and like way better than having some overbearing husband. <laughs> hey, Edward, I need those reports on my desk in five minutes. And big time, remember the cover sheet. Cover sheet. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you recognize that a lot of men are the ones in charge and are abusing their workers, so thank you for acknowledging that. Maybe if you keep saying it, you'll believe it too. You can do this. Hey, I'm in here! Now I'm home and I can say hi to the most important people in my life. Hi, babies! Now it's 10 p.m. and I'm getting ready to head back out to the club and start the process all over again. It's a never-ending cycle of partying, drinks, men, abortions, pills, partying. It's so awesome and way more fulfilling than having a precious child of my own. <laughs> Where? Sauce, bro. <laughs> Sauce. Most childless women are not doing this. Most childless women are, yes, working, but they're also like traveling. They have much more money to use because they're not spending it on children. So they're more likely to, I don't know, be able to buy a house. They're more likely to travel. They can retire earlier. They can buy a lot more nice things for themselves. Like for some people, children just don't fulfill them and that's totally fine. They're not trying to fill a void with like, clubbing and partying and abortions and such like and this is also just so insensitive because some people can't have children there are women with fertility issues and they are upset and depressed and they would love to have a kid and they just aren't able to have their own kids and that's so heartbreaking if anyone is going to be trying to fill the void of not having children it is people who want children but cannot have them. And so they're the people you're making fun of here. Women who decide not to have children because they don't want children are most of the time very happy, living very fulfilling lives. Statistically, they're actually one of the most happy subgroups. Like unmarried, childless children are thriving because, you know, uh, misogyny and the patriarchy often will impact them very negatively, especially in heterosexual marriages when it comes to like childcare and also now being expected to like have a job and like look after their husband, etc. Men with wives are happier, single women are happier. Um, that's just a fact. And like, yeah, so effectively the people who are upset about not having kids are the people who struggle with fertility and you are making fun of them. And that's not an okay thing to do. Like that's really fucked up. You know, some women are happy without kids. Some aren't, sure, but the ones who aren't, they've tried and are trying and you're making fun of them. So fuck you. Here we have fired Twitter employee applies for first real job. Mr. Dunsenson? Yeah, come on in. You know, uh, you're 20 minutes late. 
Yeah, at Twitter we didn't have like start times. Schedules are a remnant of an oppressive colonialist regime. Oppressive colonialist regimes? It is so unbelievably funny to me that all these like Musk stands and like conservatives think that Twitter was like the most woke place on earth. Like they think that all of these people were so anti-conservative and anti-freedom of speech and like all of that. Like they were convinced about that. When in reality, they were just doing their job and like running a website and a business. Like there was no ulterior motive. Being like people were getting their accounts removed for hate speech and like they were, yeah. Okay, some people were doing a lot of damage and like it was privately owned, so they are allowed to be banned for that. But people are banned from Twitter all the time. I've seen a lot of accounts get removed from Twitter just being on K-pop Twitter, man. They get, <laughs> like, accounts get deleted all the time. It just kind of happens, not for any particular like extremist reason sometimes. You know, it can happen to anyone. Your account can be deleted. If you get reported enough times, your account's gonna get deleted. They won't even look into it sometimes, you know? Your account just gets deleted because enough people have reported it. They don't have time to look through everything. And that can be someone who is saying extremely leftist things too. Like accounts just get deleted. That's just what happens. And that's a consequence of your own actions. And you have to accept that. And like be talking about like the algorithm pushing a specific agenda. It's just like the demographic who's on Twitter that ate in that. It's about just traction and engagement and if you're saying false information it's gonna be deleted or it's gonna at least have like a community note or something on it like if you don't want your account to be deleted if you don't want your tweets to be reported and deleted do your research give sources you know like these people were doing their jobs and they would they were doing their jobs well they didn't have an ulterior motive why do you, why why do you assume that they were all just like these woke leftists who never did any work. Like, have you seen the collapse of Twitter since then? Like they, they were doing work, um, quite a lot of it actually. And they, they didn't have an agenda, I promise you. They were just doing their jobs because it was necessary in order to keep the platform afloat. Well, look, the work here is pretty demanding. We need to find someone who can inspect all of our outgoing- Miss, are, are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm not really used to bosses using trigger words like demanding and inspect and work. But this is a job. We don't say that either. Then how do you get any work? Huh. Uh, well, I mean, so how do you get any uh, labor stuff, production, the handwork, and that work, sorry, stuff done. How do you get any stuff done? <laughs> Us has got tons of stuff done on Twitter. Like... What it, how did you think this website was being run? How do you think it was kept up and running? You remember when Elon Musk came in and fired everyone and the whole website like collapsed? <laughs> there was like a couple days where it didn't work. I don't know if you're on Twitter, but shit gets fucked up all the time. My Twitter was glitching out this morning. It wasn't working. My notifications weren't working. I couldn't refresh them. None of them were showing up. Like, it just, it was broken. It wasn't working for me. There's been multiple times where you can't look at quote retweets. It just doesn't work. The algorithm is a complete mess. It makes no sense. I see the same tweet like six times in like half an hour. Like, it's just a mess. Shit's falling apart. I've seen everything happen because I spend way too much time on Twitter. And it didn't do that before. Like, there was a whole day where you had like a limit of how many tweets you could see. You could only see what, like a thousand tweets in the day. And then it was like cut off. You can't see any more tweets. Like that's ridiculous because he forgot to do something because he wasn't running the website that was previously being run and working fine. What would you say you did there? I was responsible for so much as a content moderation specialist. Some days during my afternoon cornhole sesh, I get a text telling me I had to ban someone. So then you'd have to actually like walk over to your computer and ban them? Uh, no. I would just hit a button on my phone and then BAM! Babylon B, banned. Libs of TikTok, banned. Steve from Fruitport, Michigan, you know he banned. And then back to cornhole. Again, just like being like, all these conservatives were banned because we ban all conservatives without even checking. Like you just said, 
that she would ban accounts without checking why. She'd just ban them. So that would mean that all accounts, no matter who from, no matter where from, would be banned. Again, I've seen so many accounts get banned for, for much less. <laughs> you spend 10 years on Stan Twitter, you see that shit, man. Everyone gets banned. Everyone gets deleted. Everyone's, you get, everyone gets suspended all the time. And sometimes it's very deserved. Like in these cases, it is genuinely deserved because they are hurting people. They're spreading misinformation. They're spreading hate. It's like leading to the doxing of people. Like it's deserved banning, but acting as though they're the only people getting banned is just absolutely ridiculous. It happens to liberals and leftists as well. It happens to everyone. Anyone can get banned for a very large number of reasons. What, what else did you do there? Drank like a sailor. They had wine on tap, mimosas, a full microbrewery. They also had AA, which was kind of helpful for me. One day at a time. Alcoholism. That's hilarious. We love alcoholism. Fucking hilarious joke there, guys. Good job. So I think I've seen everything that I need to see. Did you have any questions for us? Tons. Okay, first, you don't actually, like, expect me to come into the office, do you? Well, how do you expect to get any work done, labor done, stuff done at the factory without coming into the factory? Oh, so this is like a job job. Yeah, that might be a deal breaker for me. I think it's a very reasonable ask to not come into the office, especially because currently there is a surge in COVID. Like obviously if you're at a factory job with like manual labor, you have to go into the office. If you're someone who doesn't wanna do manual labor and you don't wanna do that shit and you want an office job, you aren't going to be applying for that. Like being like the only real job is manual labor is so ironic coming from a social media account. Like, <laughs> You don't have to go into an office to do work. COVID taught us that, that you can be productive from home. Yeah, it's like been shown through studies, right? That when you're at the office, you could be at the office for eight hours. On average, people only work for a total of four. You can do that from home and be just as productive. You know, you don't have to go into the office. It's not, it's not necessary. You don't have to do that. And like, yeah, manual labor, sure. But a Twitter employee who wants to work from a desk, isn't applying for a manual labor job. Be for real, okay? Stop bullshitting. <laughs> uh, also, I didn't notice any meditation rooms when I came in. Do you guys have any gurus on site or is it more like a BYOG type situation? I also, I don't think it's a bad thing to have resources for like mindfulness and like just general well-being at the office, again, on average, you only get about four hours of work done in a day. Like if you can use that time like mindfully, instead of just, I don't know, playing like Candy Crush on your phone or scrolling on Twitter, then I, that could be an option. You know, a lot of offices offer like counseling um, and other things. It can help people focus, you know? Like some people are more productive after they've meditated for half an hour, but you know. I don't know. I don't think that's so much of a bad thing. And I, I don't think it really deserves to be made fun of that much. But, you know, we have horrible working conditions. It's that thing of being like, it should be exactly the same and it should never change and it should never progress. They have such a like, you're meant to hate work. You're meant to hate your life and be miserable at the office frame of mind. Like that's how they view things is that like, you're meant to hate your job. You're meant to hate everything. And if you don't, then it's not real work. If you aren't miserable and you aren't wanting to quit and you aren't like killing yourself over your job, then it's not a real job. Like go away. That's just, that's not true. I think that it's so sad that you think you have to hate your life in order for your work to be valid. You should enjoy what you do. You shouldn't have to kill yourself for your job. You shouldn't have to like destroy yourself in order to have money and like do things you enjoy. Like you should, you should be able to have time off. You should be able to enjoy things and not be stressed out all the time. But you know, maybe that's just me. <laughs> I have saved the best for last. And by best, I mean the worst, um, the worst for last. There are actually a couple of absolutely God awful, ones I have left, um, but I'm gonna save one of them for next time. So if you wanna see it, leave a like. Um, if this gets 9,000 likes, I will do another one of these and I will show you one of the worst 
videos I've ever seen. Um, but for now, I'm gonna show you another one of the worst videos I've ever seen from the video titled Middle Eastern Terrorist Caught at Southern Border. So like, just, this is horrifically racist and I'm telling you that before we go into it. If you can't tell from the thumbnail and the title of this video. No take Goras, do not flee. You have been apprehended crossing an international border. You will be processed quickly and safely, but I must ask you a few questions first, since there have been reports of terrorists trying to pass themselves off as migrants. Comprende? See. Si. See. Si. See. Si. Hola! Me gusta tacos y chalupas! So far, this is obviously so funny. Um, stopping Mexican people from crossing the border because, you know, people are suspicious. You know, we don't want people entering our country illegally because that's disgusting. People crossing an imaginary line, how dare they? And then obviously having, having a Middle Eastern person dressed up super stereotypically in order to hide himself. So this Middle Eastern person showing a lot of like stereotypes in order to disguise himself. So yeah, we're already off to a really great start with that. And what is each of your destinations in the US? Nueva York. Nueva York. Mi hermana vive en Tucson. Uh, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? Y, uh... You want to get into the U.S. to use the bathroom and the library. Si, sí, senor. Where are you from, sir? Mexico! Ole! Knowing that these stereotypical, over-the-top, offensive things this person is doing has been written into this by an Islamophobic white person makes it so much worse. Like, you know who wrote that in. Using racism to be racist for a different reason is wild. It's double layered and it's horrific. Yeah, I'm gonna need to examine your bags. Of course, me amigo, of course. Let's see here. Mexican flag. Hey. Ah, maracas. A Jimmy Buffett margarita maker. See, si, me gusta margaritas. Chips and salsa. Yeah, hey, have some. We Mexicans have endless chips and salsa. Sir, it just seems like you're imitating a bunch of crude Mexican stereotypes. I would never. Whoa, what is this? That's a, that's a hot tamale. Careful, it's muy muy spicy. This is an explosive device, sir. How do you explain this? Uh, me necesito siesto. <sighs> Who is this guy? Uh, es mi tío Abduro. Your uncle Abdullah, as in the Arabic name Abdullah, with an O at the end? Si, senor. And how much did he pay you to say that? Five thousand Pakistani rupees with a mustache drawn on and pesos on the side. Because the fact is Arabic is super important to this story, right? Only Arabic people can be terrorists. All Arabic people trying to cross into the US have explosives on them because they're all terrorists and they're also all racist as well. They're all stupid, uh, racist and terrorists. Fucking horrible thing to say and imply in this video. But oh my God, that reminds me of something. When I was in the airport flying to LA, so from Heathrow, there were these two Americans, so it was an American couple, they were like, I would say in their 60s or something. Um, and we were waiting for our bags to be checked because I had left a perfume in my bag, which was so frustrating. So my bag had to be checked and I was waiting. And then this older couple were also waiting. And the people who were inspecting our bags, like going through everything, scanning them or whatever, um, the person who was doing that was Middle Eastern. And this man decided that that would be so funny to point out to me. He looked at me just like laughing and went, isn't this so funny? It's reversed. We have the Middle Eastern man going through the white people's bags. That's so funny. And I was like, um, what the, f what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't really know how to respond to that or what to say. 
um, I was just kind of in shock of like, why did you say that to me? Why did you think that was appropriate to say? My God, bro. Wake up, sir. You're coming with me. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, okay. You got me. You got me. I'm not Mexican. I'm a refugee from Ukraine. All right, well, then say something in Ukrainian. Uh, me gusta Chernobyl. Oh. Well, any friend of Ukraine's a friend of ours. You're free to go. Whoa, 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 not so fast. You forgot your bomb. You're gonna need this to fight Russia. And we finish it off with a great dose of f fuck Ukrainians, I guess. Um, for some reason, conservative Americans are pro-Russia. I guess, you know what, it makes no sense because they hate Russia and they talk about how bad Russia is and how it's like a fascist state and like fuck Russia. But then when it comes to Ukraine versus Russia, they're like on Russia's side. And that's wild to me. It's like, they don't like the absence of freedom within Russia, but they also really like colonization and colonialism. Like they really like invading other countries. So they're like, hell yeah, Russia, go fuck them up. And they don't like the fact that Ukrainian refugees want to come into their country because how dare they like escape from a war-torn country to find somewhere else to live where that isn't happening. Like, bro. They don't want to leave Ukraine either. They would love to be able to stay there. I promise you, they do not want to be in the US. They don't want to be there. They would rather be at home. But unfortunately, they don't have that choice right now. And yeah, your country is sending money there to help them out. But like, fair enough. They need help, you know? And you have more than enough money for it. Do you know how much money you put into your own military to go invade countries? so much, but you're chill with that. You like going and invading other countries and fucking shit up in other countries. You still wanna help countries that are being fucked up. Like have some, have some compassion. It's just a little bit of compassion. So yeah, obviously that's one of the worst videos I've ever seen. Um, Just incredibly, incredibly like Islamophobic for absolutely no reason at all. Being like, obviously, Arabic people are all terrorists. They're all going to lie about who they are and their identity so they get, get into our country and fuck shit up. Like, you want to talk about people going into other countries and fucking shit up? I know I just said it before, but, like, the fact that, like, a couple of Arabic people committed a horrible crime in your country, like, 20 years ago, has meant that you've gone and, like, started wars in their countries is... It's fucking ridiculous. And you think they're the terrorists? <laughs> they're the terrorists? You've gone and killed so many people in their countries because they committed one act in yours. That was terrible, obviously. It was, it was horrible. However, the fact that you've become terrorists in their countries and still are upset that they even want to step foot in your country is ridiculous. Like, imagine if they in their countries were like, no Americans are allowed in here. Or they pulled over every American and expected them for like terrorism. I'm sure you would be in outrage. You'd be so mad. You'd be like, how dare you? Because you think you're above everyone. And you're like, white people aren't terrorists. You're terrorists. I'm like, no, no Americans. White Americans are pretty horrible, actually. Like pretty horrific. I'd say white people in general have committed the most atrocities in the world. If anyone's gonna be accused of terrorism and bringing terror into other countries, it's gonna be fucking white people. Like, let's be so real. Even now, like, you be like, colonialism happened ages ago, you know? It's like, okay, uh, Nazi Germany, European, white. Russia, what's happening right now in Ukraine, white. What's happening in all these Middle Eastern countries? Who fucking started that? Americans, what about what happened in Cuba? Americans, like it's white people who are fucking shit up, okay? And you blame them? You're like, actually you're the problem. No, they're not. Shut up, sit down, go away, grow up. Not a funny video, um, horrific actually. Uh, the other video I was gonna watch today um, is called Chinese military to just shout wrong pronouns at American soldiers, which is also a pretty horrific 
racist video that there's a lot to say about it. However, I've been here longer than I realized. Um, so I think I'm actually going to call it the end of the video here because I think that we've had enough. I think that that video was enough. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Again, leave a like if you want to see me watch that video and then some of their others. They're, they're definitely something. Um, I, I kind of regret finding this account, actually, this channel, and I regret going through it. But also, you know, we've talked about it now and there's much more to talk about. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Toulouse, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Trini, Raven, Danielle, Anoli Like Cannoli, Elias, Jewel, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, Boston, and Chris. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. I'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as bonus mini podcasts, outtakes, live streams, vlogs, and more. We recently went to KCON and LA and there'll be a vlog up about that soon. I've also got a fun little special project, as I mentioned at the start of this video, coming soon. So go join if you wanna be in on that. Um, yeah, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>